Hey, welcome to AutoTech World Automotive How To's. In this video, I'll show you how to replace the power steering pressure line on this 2008 Ford Edge. This Ford Edge is leaking power steering fluid due to a leak in the power steering pressure line. Pretty common from what I read online. Unfortunately, the cap is gone, so it's sealed with a rubber glove and a zip tie which doesn't work too good by the looks of it. If you have a leak and you're not sure where it's coming from, it's pretty easy to figure out. Make sure the power steering reservoir has fluid in it first. Then have an assistant get in the car, start it, and put pressure on the system while you are under the vehicle checking for leaks. This one was pretty simple. It was dropping right here from the pressure hose. This is all one piece from here to there. Also, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. You don't want any fluid squirting in your eyes. All the parts you need for the job is the hose and about one and a half quarts Merkin 5 automatic transmission fluid. I also got a new cap for this one. I hope it will fit. We have two brackets holding the hose in place. These are both 8mm bolts from the top. I do this one first and then the other one. With both bolts removed it's pretty loose but it's still connected to the other hose. In order to get them separated I'll just take a pipe plier and bend these brackets back. Now you can see that the hose is pretty loose on both sides. When I'm going to disconnect the hose from the steering rack, the fluid will come out. So here's what I'll do. I'll put a drain pan underneath where it will be leaking. This bolt comes undone fairly simple. Get a 3 8 extension, put a swivel on it with a 17 mm socket attached to a 3 8 ratchet. You can put it on pretty straight and it comes off no problem. You can already take it out of the brackets to make it drain better. Once it's done pouring out, you can go ahead and undo the hose from the pump. Now this is a pretty tight area, but I'm able to get the 17mm wrench in there. Since I can't get it loose, I'll just double wrench it to multiply my strength. Once it's loose, I'm able to spin out the bolt with just fingers. Once the banjo bolt is out, the hose just slides out. And remember, this long piece, it goes in first. This hose is in a Ziploc bag, you can just pull it out. These gaskets, copper washers go on the banjo bolts and act as a seal. One is actually still stuck on the bolt. This is what you should really check. You need to be sure that none of them are stuck to the vehicle. Like the pump or the steering rack. Or just check your old hose. There's two here and one here. But this one was stuck on the bolt. So none is stuck to the pump or the rack. Take that old washer off the bolt, maybe use a screwdriver and put one new washer on each bolt. The other washer will then go on the other side of the hose fitting. Remember the side with the long tab or with the heat shield goes in first and the tab is supposed to face down. I'll put the washer on already and hold it in place with my finger so I won't drop it. I actually had to cut half of the tab off because it was in the wrong spot. After I cut half of it off, it worked fine. So check your hose before you install it. Okay, I got it on and the bolt started. Let me tell you a trick to make the drop a lot easier. Trust me, here's the trick. Before you tighten the bolt, route the hose as it is supposed to be routed. You also want to be sure that the bolt went in straight. Because if you cross thread that, you're buying a new pump. I'm running the bolt all the way down with my ratcheting wrench. After I make sure the bolt goes in straight, but won't tighten it at this point. Now I can connect to the steering rack, which is a lot easier to get to. With a swivel and extension, I can spin the banjo bolt all the way in. Then I can put the holes back in the bracket and bend them back with my plier. Start the bolt on the passenger side and hand tighten it. Then do the same to the driver's side. After both 8mm bolts are hand tight, tighten them with your ratchet. Remember, these are small bolts, so don't over tighten them. Tighten your banjo bolts to 35 foot pounds. Fairly simple. To the pump, it will be hard to use a torque wrench. so. I'll just use my wrench to tighten it and make it as tight as the other one. Take some brake clean and wash off all the oil. Then we will fill it. Now we can finally get rid of this glove and zip tie. I put this paper towel around here for the case that I may spill a bit. 
Let's fill this reservoir to full with the right fluid, Mercon 5. Now that it is full, get in the vehicle and turn the steering wheel all the way to one side and then all the way to the other side. Do that a couple times. The fluid usually goes down while you do that because you're bleeding the trapped air out of the system. Top off your fluid, get back in the vehicle and do the same thing, except this time you should change it up a bit. This time you should have the vehicle running. Make sure you go all the way. That way you put some pressure on the system and if there is any leak the fluid should come out. Recheck your fluid, looks good. Alright, let's open this package and see if this cap fits. Nice, it's perfect. If you are looking to get any parts or tools that I'm using in this video, look for links in the description. Let's get back under it and see if anything is leaking, especially the banjo bolts. It looks good at the pump and the steering rack. This means the job is complete. If this was helpful, like the video and don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram.